Howdy once again, it's Tubal Cain, and in this shop video, I'm going to show you how to shrink a bearing. I've had this old engine part uh, on the floor under the bench for five years now, and I've been meaning to do that, and I couldn't get a hold of any dry ice, so finally I found out where to get dry ice, so we're going to shrink th this bearing into this hole, into this bore. Now, it's no big deal on a small casting or a, a small... Uh, with a small bearing to, to just drive it in that would go in so easily just like that being careful not to damage it and tapping it with a with a hammer or you could put a screw in there and, uh, and a nut and a plate across there and draw it in or put it in a shop press and it would go in very easily but larger bearings visualized bearings that are just you know four six eight inches in diameter if we shrink these, they'll just drop right into the casting without uh, any damage or without any pounding. And some of the real big bearings, they, they cool in liquid nitrogen rather than dry ice because it is so much colder. But this is going to suffice. I'm going to show you how to do that. But let me talk just a little bit about dry ice first and, uh, and thermal expansion and things like that. But watch, I'll be making another video where I do some, I think, neat things with dry ice. If, and I'm sure you've seen some of that, but I think it's always interesting to play with. It's not for kids to play with. You can get uh, frostbite from it. Uh, that is a burn. You need to handle it carefully with gloves or, or instruments. So let's get started. Get your children in here. They might, might find this interesting. You've all seen this apparatus uh, in your science lab when you were a, a student, probably in seventh grade, and then again in high school. And I bought this for four bucks at a flea market. But it's nothing more than a, a, an aluminum ring and then an aluminum ball. And it's just a close fit. It's a very close fit. Examine that. But it passes through freely. But when I heat up the ball, it will expand and will no longer pass through the ring. And I'm just going to do that with the, with the old propane torch here. Now that just takes a minute, so I'll cut the camera for a, momentarily until it heats up. And I don't know what the temperature is, but I would suspect that it's uh, 400 degrees or so, because I do this over the kitchen stove sometimes to show my grandkids. All right, that doesn't take long. Turn the torch off. And there's insulated handles here, so it's pretty safe to handle. But you can see that the ball will not pass through. It's just resting in there. Now, when I pull the ball off, it passes right through because it contracted. It reduced in diameter when I cooled it. So in shrinking a bearing we're doing really just the opposite of this. We're going to uh, uh, cool the bearing and that will reduce the diameter so that it drops in the bore. Sometimes we put a bearing on a shaft and I did a video on that and uh, I forgot what it's called but it's a Minneapolis Moline tractor video where I put a large bearing onto the axle and I did that by heating the bearing up and putting it on the cold axle and then it it instantly uh, uh, locked up and, and was on there. I didn't have to drive it on. There's always a danger of damaging a bearing if you drive it on. If you're not used to bearings, handling bearings and the precision with which they're made and the expense of them, you do not want to damage them. So that's thermal expansion and contraction. Now let me talk a little bit about dry ice and then uh, there we go and I had to go to a grocery store. It's really hard to find around here because they don't ship frozen fish and so on because we're not a state where there's a lot of fishing here in Illinois where you would send things back home but I'm going to put the uh, the warm bearing right in there because that takes a little while and I, I did this before and you can see how it it sunk down in there. Now dry ice is nothing more than frozen carbon dioxide. That costs seven dollars but 
you know, there's probably two bucks worth of of uh, carbon dioxide there. And it, the temperature of that is 109.3 degrees in Fahrenheit, which is about 78 and a half Celsius. I know most of the world talks Celsius, but I, I grew up in Fahrenheit. And then when we talked metric, we used to call it centigrade. Dry ice is called uh, card ice in uh, the UK by some people. I never heard the term until I looked it up. But that's cooling off. Now again, you get frostbite if you touch that. So when the, when the man made it up for me, and they make it right there in the grocery store, they just wrap it up in, uh, in paper and hand it to me, and I put it right in this cooler that I took with me. So um, you can do a lot of neat tricks with it, but while, while that is uh, cooling and shrinking, let me show you something here. This is a baby food jar with warm water in it, just tap water. And let's put, put that in there. I'm going to cover up the cooler again. That's just water vapor. It looks like smoke, but it's just water vapor. But it's, it's so cold that it immediately sinks. Now this was used for special effects in the movies years ago. Now they have other ways of doing it. But you can see the dry ice on there. If I can poke it down a little bit. I remember my dad doing this. He brought a big chunk of dry ice home when we were kids. Dad didn't believe in, in toys. Yet he would bring neat things for us to see and play with. And just tell us, don't touch that. You get a burn. This gave us a warning, kind of a stern warning. Just a little flavor, like you're drinking a Coca-Cola. That wonderful carbon dioxide that's, that's in soft drinks. Alright, waiting for that bearing to get good and cold, and it's shrinking it. You can almost hear it shrink. That's my dad, Norman Peterson. And he would bring us home dry ice and, and demonstrate that for us. And, you know, that's probably what they uh, use in the Frankenstein movies and in their test tubes and all of the, the diabolical things that they did. Now, that's warm water that I put it in. And uh, Norman also brought us uh, mercury to play with and uh, admonished us to wash our hands when we're done with that. And, you know, I'm not crazy yet. I'm not a mad... Well, maybe I am. But mercury will make you go crazy like the Mad Hatter. Well, that bearing's been in there now for, in the dry ice for a few minutes, so let's see if it, let's see if it'll go in. Ooh, that's too cold to touch. Falls right in. Now, it doesn't take uh, long before that expands enough to where it won't come out. It, as a matter of fact, it's usually within moments. Now, as the water uh, cools, the reaction isn't quite as great. Now, it, remember, what, what it's uh, sublimating is what it's doing. Now, when I turn the casting over like that, I got it on boards here so I can drive it out, but uh, using a brass drift, it can be driven out, but you're going to see that it's, it's uh, in there quite tight. And now out it comes. And that, people, is how you shrink a bearing. Much more useful in the larger sizes, but I don't have anything big to demonstrate on, so this will have to do. If I may summarize this demonstration, we have an interference fit here where the bearing does not go in. We know the bearing is a little larger than the bore. I'm repeating myself. And uh, I think you know the traditionally bearings that were in the metric sizes, so 
with the caliper here, you can see that this is uh, a metric. Uh, it's a 50 millimeter bearing. And uh, I don't like measuring a bore with, with, with this. I just, to me, it isn't accurate. So I have used the, the telescoping gauge. And taking a reading here, you'll see that it's just a little bit smaller than the bearing. Not much. That, that's the way press fits are. That it, it's only a, in English uh, a thousandth, uh, sometimes only a half thousandth or two thousandth, and that will vary with the diameters. There are there are rules and regulations and parameters for that. But uh, this I would call this a medium sized bearing, and you can see again that uh, 50 millimeters, and then we the bore just a little bit smaller. Now if you ever run into a problem and uh, the bearing spins in here in an old casting, you, you can use a bearing mount that, uh, that may help uh, keep it in there because you don't want the whole bearing to spin. The whole idea is just the, that the uh, inner part of the bearing turns. Now uh, let me also say that uh, the bearing could be damaged by that because we, we uh, got other dirt and, and, and so on in there and some condensation that may damage so I would lubricate that bearing but this is going to be in an engine. There was a uh, an oil seal out here so all of the lubrication was done from the inside on the crankcase. Well that's it I'm talking too much this is a tubal cane saying so long for now I'm glad you watched uh, give me a comment a thumbs up if I deserve it a thumbs down if I don't I guess. See you in the next video and watch for that other video on dry ice.